example is a truss problem. Uh, we're going to use a brace frame. Uh, we're going to assume this uh, to be a truss problem. All the joints are pin connected. Uh, and so it'll essentially behave as a truss. We have a 200 kip uh, force acting horizontally at one of the joints. And so what we want to do is we want to create this truss and analyze it using the right side. Uh, the first thing we need to do is ensure that the units uh, in RISA and the problem statement are consistent. One way we can do that is by clicking on the units section. And so since we're working in the standard imperial system, I'm going to make sure that we use that. So we'll go imperial, uh, left click OK. Next thing we want to do is um, ensure that we are using, well, let's use a grid that's uh, more uh, useful than the one we have now. We have a 30 by 30 and uh, really we can use a, a, a 10 foot by 10 foot uh, grid. So we go to modify drawing grid, go 1 at 10 along the X and 1 at 10 along the Y. Pretty simple example. So we just have a nice little square. Um, the next thing we want to do is create the members and so we use this draw member tool and in um, this case we are using uh, trust elements in order to create a trust element we want to make sure that the ends are pinned so we're going to use the release codes uh, pin and uh, pin at both ends double click on pin at both ends release codes uh, everything else should, uh, for our purposes, not be relevant. So we apply, and so we'll go ahead and create uh, the first member from um, node 1 to end 2. Notice there's this little circles at the end, which means that the moment has been released. Uh, create the next element, and finally uh, node 4, and then uh, the diagonal element. And so we have um, our truss. It looks like the one we have here on uh, the right. So the next thing we want to do is want to make sure that we have proper uh, boundary conditions or supporting conditions. So we have a pin support at this point, N1, and a pin support uh, at N4. We'll use the uh, modify boundary conditions tool uh, and we'll go pin. We are working in 2D so we want to ensure that no out of plane translations or rotations uh, take place and one way to do that is by setting this three items to fixed the Z translation, X rotation and Y rotation. That will ensure that the problem stays in two dimensions. We go ahead and create uh, the pin supports. Next thing we want to do is want to make sure that the other two joints do not um, move out of plane. So we'll pull this guy back up. This time, however, we'll release all the constraints in the two-dimensional plane, but we will keep the three out of plane um, degrees of freedom from uh, going out of plane. <clears throat> so we'll apply that, and then we get our supports uh, out of plane supports. The next thing we want to do is we want to put a load, the 200 kip load on it. This, um, so we want to use the apply join loads uh, tool in this case. We also have distributed load which would be for beams and a point load along the beam itself or a beam. Uh, so we'll use apply joins, join loads um, in this case, we're going to have a um, X force, and it's a negative 200 kip force, so apply that. And so we click on the node 3, which is where the load is acting. And there's my um, 200 kip load. Finally, the last thing we need to do is um, use 
load combinations. In this case, we only have one load, and we have that load in basic load case number one. So we'll click this basic load case number one. We're not going to factor this. It's already been factored, so we get um, we just use one. And the last thing, I guess, is to solve the problem. And so when we go ahead and solve it, <clears throat> we um, get this uh, results window come up, but we can go ahead and get rid of that. What we're going to use is we're going to use this tool right here to show the axial uh, forces. Um, notice we don't have an axial force in this member, which is uh, it's reasonable. If we apply the method of joints at this point, uh, the sum of the forces along the x uh, gives us the axial force in the beam, which is 200 uh, kips compression and so if we send force along the y the force in this member should be zero um, since this is a 45 degree uh, element incline element this force should also be equal to the uh, force in the beam uh, and so it is 200 uh, kips this is consistent one other thing we could do with the trusses is um, get the reactions and the way to do that is to go um, to this bring up the plot options dialog box tool. And so we want to go to um, joints. And in joints, we want to show the reactions. We're going to go X and Y. We don't have any moments, so we don't need to worry about those. And then include the magnitudes. We apply that. <clears throat> and so. Um, Okay, and notice that we have um, reactions of 200 um, here, and then negative 200, and a horizontal reaction in this joint of 200. I uh, hope that was helpful.